Sometimes you see she did the hands. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta jump in on that action. Something, something. Okay, hold on. Do it. I'm and while you do that, this. while you do that, I want to just bring something to the forefront. Do um, it. Alexi and I, and I just want to just say, what's up, Lainey? How much I love this woman. And we had this moment. I didn't even talk to her about it. I'm about to surprise her with <laughs> uh, this. He's about to tell me something. I don't I'm know. about to surprise her with this moment. Yeah, I said, um. I had a moment the other day where I, funny. Sorry. <laughs> I had a moment the other day where we were walking through London, right, um, on a break for the bridge experience. And you ever get like a song in your head that you just like can't get out? Oh my gosh! And we're Damn walking. It, this song just came back in my head. Yes, yeah, not Despacito. Oh but, my god, that um, song! That yes, song. It's not, not, it's not Despacito. But, okay. So we're walking the other day, right? We're walking. Bridge experience break, and this song's in my head, right? And I'm walking, and I just start humming it. And if I ever fall in love, so again, I will be sure that the lady is a friend. If I ever fall in love, so true. are walking through a train station in London singing this shit loud, <laughs> loud. loud. And, and like doing like all sorts of vocal notes and, and harmonies. And it just made my heart smile. I mean, I literally lost it. I was laughing and just, I just thought about it a moment ago and I wanted to just bring it up. That's why I love my boo. That's why I love my boo. Because I'm crazy. I'm crazy. My crazy matches his crazy. So it's um, perfect. It does. It's perfect. What up, guys? A lot Hi. of you guys are on. We like you guys and we love you. Um, yeah, I see lots of peeps on here. Uh huh. Here's some boys to men. We were just talking about the two album. Do you yes. guys remember the two album? Two? Like, uh, End of the Road. What was. Uh, uh, Water Runs Dry. Yes. Um, what's, how does End of the Road go? Is that what we were just saying? Although we go to the end of the road. You belong to me, I belong to you. Uh, oh shit. Don't make us do it. Don't make us do it. What's up, guys? Um, so, Blue. it's been a while Blue. since we've done a Partners in Shine Blue. because we have been traveling. Blue. We have... <laughs> this we're is in, the stuff. We're in a silly mood. We have been traveling our asses off. Though, we have been traveling... We our asses we off. are right now. We're in Toronto, Canada. Yes. For anybody who's who wants to come get it in with us for the Bridge Experience, BridgeExperience.com. Neri, Neri, put that in the comments right now. Drop it, Neri, because we know you in here. Oh, it, oh, Emily's on. Neri's on. Uh huh. Awesome. See some peeps. I see Paulina's on. I see Lainey's on. We like Sherry's it. on. Calvin Richard. Although we've come, Denise, what up? To the end of the road. Yeah, get it, baby. Ryan. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna stop being crazy and actually talk about some shit right now. Cause Let's do it. Let's we are definitely it. on one today. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so what are we talking about today? So, uh, yes. So, uh, we got some topics. Yes. So, <laughs> me first versus we first. I'm gonna go right into one of the questions that was posed by Devin Work Harder. Work Hauser, uh, which is our homeboy. He's and amazing. What's going on, Tammy? Look, look him up. Yes, beautiful Jeez. transformational music. Oh my god! Like beast. So good. So Devin said. Temple is still one of my favorites. Yes. How do you hold your own needs slash manifestation slash abundance slash joys while still being aware of the collective needs slash conflicts slash dynamics? Question mark. Simply, yes. how to balance my attention on my own amazing journey yes. within a world that is calling out for so much healing. Yes. Great question. Um, I'm going to take a stab at this. Get in there. Here's what I personally do, <laughs> and for any of you that feel this, like 
there is the dissonance between like I'm in such a good space and there's so much out here that needs healing and the way I look at that is anything that's out here is a reflection of what's in here so if there's anything out here that I deem needs healing or is out of alignment or out of balance it's quite frankly and quite simply my work to do that within myself to heal my own um, misalignment to that energy where in myself am I still in judgment where yes. in myself am I still in uh, pain and yes. terrorism in my own life where yes. in myself am I still in lack and poverty yes where in myself can I heal that within myself so <clears throat> that then it heals the collective Get em, so baby. that for me is how I balance it because it's essentially only one of us here uh -huh. right so the work I do on me is the work I do on you yep. is the work that we do on each other my healing is your healing mm -hmm. and is the world's healing so I look at it that way and I still am constantly using the world as um, a barometer for where there's still work to do within myself absolutely absolutely I like big and I cannot lie, you other brothers cannot die. When a girl walks in with a little bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. All right, so. It's like 90s throwback. Yes, day. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, <laughs> Despacito. No, All right, I'm no. Sorry. I'm sorry, I just had to do it. No, okay. months. Months that song has been in my head, and uh -huh. I finally got in and out. Okay, so my answer to this is similar. This is why we married each other. When I take care of me, I take care of you. My also, uh, the thing that I would say that I keep reminding myself of is that balance does not exist. Every, uh, we're always off balance. Yes. Life always. continues to life in every single way. And so the best thing I could ever do is to bless the mess. Mm. See it, I see think. it, but don't go into it, right? Keep, rhyme. keep my conversation upstairs. Keep my consciousness upstairs. Keep my love vibrating high while seeing what some people are, what they're caught in, the illusion they're caught in, this lie they're caught in yes. that, that makes them believe that they're less than, the lie that has them in lack li and limitation. And keep myself in, in, in the love frequency. Keep myself doing, doing this all damn day. You understand? You understand? Blow! Remember. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Why are you gonna pretend like you drink? You don't drink. I don't even drink. Yeah. We in an Airbnb with somebody's alcohol. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait, what's the next question? Yes, next question is what from, we got? from your own experience. Not comma. My, I'll come some commas. <laughs> I'll come some commas, yet. Um from your own experience. What are the most effective practices to bring yourself into alignment to attract Ooh. the ideal partner? Yes. Ooh, what a question. Um, uh, there's so many things to do. I think the number one, number one top thing to do is despacito. Stop singing no. that fucking song. Is what you should do. <laughs> stop. Don't ever sing that song. Start if there. You want to attract somebody who Start is normal. Start singing despacito. Um, <laughs> What I'm saying, I'm Claudia. Um, okay, so my number one piece of advice, and this was something that took me a little while to get. I used to have like my list of things, uh -huh. like, oh, they need to be this, and they need to be that, mm -hmm. and they need to have this together. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, am I all of that? Am mm. I actually embodying all of these things I require? Yes. Because until I'm actually embodying it, I'm only going to keep attracting what I am. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> and so the number one thing you can do is one, get real mm -hmm. and get honest about how you're actually showing up. And the best way to do that mm. is to get objective feedback from people mm. who are willing to tell you the truth. Because we often have an idea about ourselves that's really skewed. Like I am so awesome and I am never messing up mm -hmm. and it's everyone out there and it's their fault and all my excuses are valid yep. and when we get feedback we can actually see oh I actually have some shit in my way yes. <laughs> that I have not been willing to look at and I've been kind of resisting and avoiding so get real about that stuff first and then really take yourself on mm -hmm. take yourself on and go to work at not necessarily not necessarily fixing <laughs> yourself because we don't believe you're broken but really refining the areas where you want to tap into your higher potential Absolutely. That's my advice. That's my boo. Bye, bye. So what I would add to that, because Ask. that's a hell yes for me. Do it. Um, 
a couple things. One, stop slutting yourself out on Tinder. Don't and, slut yourself. Um, uh, because when we share ourselves, when we share our body, when we share these energies, uh, that's, you become the person you have sex with. You become the person, I don't mean just physical sex, I mean just energetic, energetic sex. Like, stop sharing yourself with everybody. Get, um, what's the word? Um, selective about who gets to come into your space. Very. Right? Hold, Very. Raise the bar on what it is that you have an expectation of and set out to be that thing. Yeah. Um, the, another thing, if you just forget all of what we said, you can, you can move into the beingness of joy. And that is always attractive. <laughs> oh, it's always a like, too, because if you're actually yes. vibrating at a high frequency and doing shit you yes. love, yes. you're going to meet people who are vibrating at a high frequency and doing shit they love. Always. And if same goes for people who are on a mission. So many people are like, I want to meet someone who's ambitious mm -hmm. and driven. It's like, well, what the fuck have you done for your dream? Yeah, what you last, <laughs> what you up to? What you doing in your life? <laughs> what <laughs> is happening in your world in the last 30 days? You want someone ambitious and you're sitting around watching Netflix uh -huh. all day. Let's well, talk about that. Yeah, real talk. Let's talk about Netflix that. Netflix and chill. The other thing you can do, Matt, comma, up up some commas, yeah. Yes. Um, is what up, Jackie? If you see a beautiful woman, like, like Alexi is a beautiful queen, right? Thanks, babe. You just do this. You're walking down the street, you see her, just walk up like this. Like she's walking, you see her, and I'm then scared go. for what's gonna you, happen. You catch eye contact, and you go. Please don't ever do that. <laughs> don't ever do that. That, that Matt, is gross, Matt, and go, that grosses like me that. out. Don't do it. <laughs> don't ever do it. Ew. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, if you do that, I promise you. Game on. Wait, I'm gonna add to something because we we've been talking about this in Soul School actually um, about being really cautious with your energy. Yes. Like you guys invest in your energy, right? You put so much into yourself, whether you're like into working out or into personal development, you're investing so much into your energy. And for you to just be handing that shit out yep. to any person who gives you attention yep. is is like it, it would be outrageous. Ridiculous. It would be Ridiculous. outrageous if it were money. Like mm -hmm. think of it in terms of money. You're spending all this time in investing and earning money and you've got a bank full of money yep. and then all of a sudden you just go on the street and you're like, here, you looked at me. Here, you called me cute. Here, my you're- My mind's telling me no, but, but my, my body, my body's telling me yes. Don't go R. Kelly on them. Baby, <laughs> I don't wanna hurt <laughs> don't nobody. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't pee on them. Don't do it. But. I was saying in soul school that it takes a lot to sit on my throne yes. with me. That's a true queen, mm -hmm. a true king. It takes a lot to sit on my throne next to me. Real talk. So, so be selective. Absolutely. Be selective. Oh, uh, being protective and selective, yes. With definitely. yourself and your energies. What yes. would you say to someone, okay, me, who feels like <laughs> okay, fine, they me. are destined to be alone due to the purpose I am designed for it, yet I want to share all this love and affection with another. Oh, you want to take that one, Pete? We were just talking about this. Yes. So, Leah, just about um, there are many schools of thought that say it is done unto you as you believe. Yes. You are always, in all ways, creating your reality. Always. So, the first place I would say to start is to clean up your language. Clean up this idea that you, and I don't know what your beliefs are, but in my uh, uh, limited perception, I would believe that we serve a God, universe, source energy, divine intelligence that is limitless. That is limitless, meaning that it can make a way out of no way. You could be in the middle of a Barneo jungle and bump into somebody who becomes the love of your life. Your True. purpose has jack shit to do with what is actually here for you. Yeah. But in my opinion, the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whatever name is more potent for you, always says yes. So it is done unto you as you believe. Ask and it is given. Seek and ye shall find. Yeah. So if you truly believe that you're destined to be alone, then that's the reality you'll create for yourself. Real talk. But based on what you wrote, you have an affinity yes. and a desire for it's love and affection. Her. Yes. So based on that desire, I think personally, and I don't know you, but what we often do is we talk ourselves out of yes. love. Yes, yes. We talk ourselves out of our dream. Yes. We talk ourselves out of the thing we actually desire because 
we we think it's too scary it's too fearful i'm too fearful of what actually might happen if i don't get it yep who do i actually have to become in order to step into that space of vulnerability and Real willingness talk. and commitment to make my dreams happen uh -huh. so look at that because that's huge real walkie talkie yeah amber what would you advise for a couple where one is high touch for a love language but the other can't really handle Ooh, mm. great question do you know your partner's love language that. don't put your tongue <laughs> in my ear <laughs> like he's high touch oh, i'm wait. super high touch i'd be all over my yeah boot. he like he's this. physical touch all day um <laughs> I would love to know his um, his love language, if you're still on Mama. Um, the biggest thing to do is you have to find ways that work for both of you. And that creates a space for communication where it's open and you're like, hey, you know, I understand that maybe touch isn't your thing, but maybe we can find somewhere in between. Maybe mm -hmm. we can find an area in between where you do enjoy that because it's he is touch as well. Okay. Okay, cool. So you guys just get to find ways that work for you because your sense of touch of what you like and his sense of touch are different. And it's going to be different for every partner you have, right? So you really have to learn how to communicate. And this is just in general with your partner. Yeah. Like, hey, what are your preferences? What do you like? What do you not like? What are, we were just talking about this the other day. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. Because um, one of my girls in Soul School, Alicia, uh, shared that she went to a workshop that talked about uh, the brakes and the accelerator when it comes to mm -hmm. sex with your partner and we were talking about like what are some of the things that make you pump the brakes and what are some of the things that make you like hit the gas and we just talked about it we laid it all out and we were kind of brainstorming like oh yeah this thing too and it's good to just know what works and what doesn't work within your partnership sexually communication wise um, even just with physical touch it's good to know so it's really good to chat about it and do it from a space of non-attachment to the result or like I have to get my way, but really I'm curious to learn about my partner and I wanna know what works for you so we can find something that works together. Yep. Yeah. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. I is back, back with a brand new mission. Something, <laughs> grabs a hold of me tightly. Mm, mm. I don't know the words to that one, but I was about to. You was about was to go there. there. I was about, about to, to go there. Okay, Frida, my cousin, Yes. asked about forgiveness. Um, by some rebuilding trust in your relationship, conscious agreements, and moving past hurts. Those two can kind of play together. Yes. So let's yes, start yes, with yes. forgiveness and we'll go to your Move question, Lynn. Lynn. Um, forgiveness, yes. Um, to the degree that you are holding grudges or angry or upset with somebody, that's to the degree of which you will experience the fullness of life. So wherever, whenever we are blocked in our lives, it's because we have some unresolved energetic ties that we have not decided to clean up within ourselves. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to go talk to the other person. Please hear that. This just means <laughs> that you get to dive within yourself and look for the gift Bring empathy and compassion, understanding that every human on the planet is doing the best they can from where they can with the tools and consciousness they have available at any given moment. So when you get that, when you catch it and get that, oh man, my mom, my dad, my sister, my cousins, my brothers, Donald Trump, everybody is doing the best they can from where they can with the tools and consciousness they have available and you get that you do the same and that everybody does dumb stuff every once in a while, if not mm. a thousand times a day, then there's a gratitude that can come with this understanding like, wow, I wouldn't be me mm -hmm. if those things wouldn't have happened in my life. And so I could be really upset with my parents or my dad or my cousin or whoever the case may be, but I wouldn't be me if those things didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to add to this. This is... Um you know, there's there's another another way to look at it that is harder to swallow, mm -hmm. and that's the way of seeing the event as actually nothing wrong happened in the first place. Mm. Seeing the event as actually it is all perfect, and exactly what was needed to happen. Yes. Based on the highest learning and highest evolution and highest expansion of everybody yes. involved, Woo. and that means the perpetrator and the victim and the hero and everyone who jumps in. If you look at it with that perspective, which like I said, is a harder pill to swallow, but 
it truly is a liberating perspective to, to look at a situation. And, and we've both been in some situations that mm -hmm. people would be like, I would never say that about this situation. We've been in those. So we are saying that about our situations mm -hmm. because of the gifts that we received from those, yes. from the, um, the lessons that we learned, from the expansion that we experienced, Absolutely. from the deep dive into the truth of who we actually are that those traumas caused mm -hmm. us to take. And truly, they were gifts. And when we can look at it in that perspective, we can look at every person, especially the person that we're labeling as the villain or the perpetrator, as a teacher. And we're all teachers, and we're all here on our own path. And they're in their own lesson, and they're in their unfolding. Yes. And we're in ours. So I'm actually grateful for every perpetrator I've ever had in my life because oh. It's made me the woman that I am today, and it's made me the being that I am today. Yes. So. The last part I'll add to forgiveness, um, which all of that goes into trust as well, um, is that forgiveness is not always an overnight process. And so the one place you would need to forgive is yourself for not necessarily, because I find that a lot of people come to us yeah. and they're, they're upset because they haven't forgiven yet. Like I, I should, should be over I should this. Be over this. Yeah. Yeah. I should totally be over this, but it's still showing up and I don't understand. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, they don't do that much, but, <laughs> but the point is like, it's all good. Like you're, you're, you're unfolding. You're unfolding. This is a part of the process. Chill the heaven out, slow the heaven down, and be okay with things not being okay in the sense where, because uh, you know we all have an idea in our head about or, or an expectation about what good looks like. But like yeah. if, if you wipe that off, right? So if you clean the windows uh, and, and the doors of perception, if you open those doors up, you would see that they all it was always perfect, in all ways. It always is. And you know, Preston and I always say, like, how do we know something was supposed to happen? Because it did. You know, and you can argue with reality and argue for your limitations and argue for how you're a victim and argue for how you're right yes. all day long. And guess where that's gonna get you? Nowhere. Mm -hmm. It may get you some sympathy and maybe a little commiserating from other people, but it's not actually gonna further you in your life. So you can argue with reality Yes. Or you can actually align with reality, embrace reality, accept reality. Have sex with reality. Do that and see what you can procreate and birth from that reality. Or if you see reality down the street, just do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. I told you, stop doing that. Look, I communicated to him to stop doing that and he's still doing it. Sometimes. This is how I wake up. No, no lie. This is how I wake up. Sometimes I'll be like, what the... I can't breathe. I've been choking on her hair because it's everywhere, but I'm sleeping. And Alexi's a really heavy sleeper. I am. And true. she takes the whole bed I and do. she does something called a tuck and roll where she takes the covers and does like that. I do that. Which basically leaves me with no covers and yeah, we don't even want to You're go welcome. on. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm appreciative of the whole thing. Um, okay, there were some really good questions, but there's, this is a lot. Okay, wait, we have another one here. Yes. Advice from the past that drain you and come up on your path again. Ah, this is a great question. So, what'd you say? Uh, Laric, I hope I'm saying that right. Laric. Laric um, said, how, when you face situations from the past that have drained you and they come up on your path again, whether it shows up for me to actually break with a situation for good or to, we can't see the rest, but to face it with openness. So anything that is continually showing up in your life is showing up because you haven't healed something yet. Uh -huh. It's literally showing up as medicine. Take this medicine because some shit is out of alignment in your life. Yep. So it's showing up as an opportunity for you to dive deep, face it. Of course, face it with openness and acceptance, welcome it in and say, great, perfect, why are you here? Yes. What have I been unwilling to look at? What have I been unwilling to do within myself yes. to truly graduate from this? Yes. Because otherwise, if you go, oh no, it's here again, and they're the asshole, and I'm the victim, and they're wrong, and da 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 da, mm. then you're just going to perpetuate it and attract it the next man, the next opportunity, the next whatever. So it's absolutely here for a lesson. Boom. Boom. Sound. Uh huh. What up, Ingrid? Uh... Vibin. Hi, Vibin from our energy. Thanks, Boo. Babe, what? Um... Okay. I'm gonna go back up. Wait, let's talk about some of the stuff that we wanted to talk about too. Let's do it. Bring it up, baby. Do um, it. 
I see that a lot of people we know and love are on this, so for all of you guys, we can't catch every single yeah, one I of see you. Ellie, but we, uh, I see so Kate on there. Kate's Jerry birthday's Park, coming up. Kim, Michael, like it. it uh, this is family right here. We got Chander, family in Cambria. Allison will be on your stage slash, uh, you know, uh, virtual virtual stage <laughs> soon. We soon. love you. We appreciate you. Yes. Um, advice for building trust in your relationship, conscious agreements, and moving past hurts. Yeah. Um, we kind of already did that. Let's go into what. We yeah. Need. So real quick, um, rebuilding trust in your relationships. You really have to understand that what happened was a gift. And you really have to understand and come from the perspective of number one, you're probably sitting in your righteous position going, they messed up. They fucked up. They're wrong. It's them. I'm right. It wasn't me. But here's the thing. If you're involved, <laughs> if you're involved, me. it always takes two to tango. Coming so you get corner. to find, <laughs> okay. you get to find your role that you played, your responsibility for yes. what you played. And you also get to understand yes. that it was perfectly needed for right now, so that you guys can actually clear and get to the bottom of something that's really going on. Yes. So that's the opportunity, that's the gift, and that's how you rebuild trust, is get on each other's team first, and stop trying to have the other person be wrong, and you be right, and you beat them up for five years because of what they did, and da da da, uh -huh. I can't believe you did. Get on their team. Get on their team and say, listen, I get that what you did didn't feel good for me, but I also get that I contributed to that. Yeah. So let's get to the bottom of what brought us to that place in the first place. Let's get on the same team. Do you want to work this out? Yes. Do I? Yes. Okay, great. What are we committed to? Well, we're committed to this vision of us being a powerful couple and blah, 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 or a powerful, you know, parenthood and whatever. Yeah. Get on the same team first and mm -hmm. recognize that neither of you are right or wrong. It's all perfect. And you both came here for exactly what you're supposed to get. Absolutely. Um, I just want to do this one right here. Yeah. Valerie said, how can a widow like me love someone else? Ah, uh, Valerie, yes. Valerie, um, first and foremost, like, I'm, I'm empathizing with you, I'm sympathizing, and, and I have compassion for that scenario because, of course, that can be painful. Uh, um, I can't even imagine. I'd also like to remind you that um, one of the best ways to honor anyone who has passed is to live your best life now. Yeah. Is to love at the top of your lungs, to turn the volume up on what it means to be truly alive. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are breathing, but they're not alive. Yeah, they're not and living. so one of the best things you could do for your, um, for, the, for the deceased, right, is to, is to continue to love. Mm -hmm. Because he never owned you and you never owned him. And um, everything in life is always just passing through. Mm -hmm. And so um, while you have life, what a gift it would be. Yeah. Because it's clear, even the fact that you wrote that says that your heart is calling you forward. But yeah. the logical mind, the rational mind is saying, no, but is this wrong? But am I, am, is this cheating? Or, or whatever the case may be. All the logical, rational mind stories that are happening in your brain, that is not true with a capital T. Your heart is speaking and it's calling you forward. You're, it, it's yearning for that thing that humans all want and need. Connection, love. You get to. Yes, yeah, you get to do that for sure. Okay. Um, all right, so now we're going to jump into a topic that we were talking about. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Claudia said, how far is that taken when drawing from abuse, physical, emotional, and spiritual? So I'm thinking that you're talking about um, you how we're saying how everything's perfect. Sometimes the perfect lesson is you leaving. To walk away, yeah. Because that's the lesson that your partner came here to get. Mm-hmm. And you. Yes. It's how to draw a line in cement and stand up for yourself and mm -hmm. uh, love yourself and respect yourself enough to walk away. Yep. And sometimes that's exactly what's needed for the highest expansion of all involved. Mm -hmm. But you still get to do it with love and say, listen, I understand that you're hurt and I understand that this is how you express it, but I also understand that this doesn't feel good for me and I will not stand for it. So because I love me so much and because I love you so much, I'm going to leave. Yep. And that's literally how you honor the process with love and you remove yourself from something that doesn't fit your standards. Boom. Yeah. Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Okay. Um, so now we're going to talk about 
something that we were talking about at lunch, which um, is such an interesting topic because mm -hmm. so many people, especially in personal development or self-help, they use being in like an emotional space mm -hmm. as an excuse <laughs> to dip out of their lives, yep. as an excuse to not take responsibility, yep. as an excuse of why things aren't you know, getting down and things aren't working well, I'm just going through something, or well, yep. this is up for me right now and I get to honor that. And there's such a fine line, and we've both done this. We've mm -hmm. both done it, so we're not like, it, we're speaking from experience, that's what we were talking about. Yep. And no, I'm perfect, so I ain't done none of that <laughs> it, was, it was all me, yeah, yeah. it was all me. Um, and you know, we were talking about how a lot of times in the past, we would find ourselves like being in our process and honoring our process, but actually, actually we were, we were honoring our victim story. Yes. We were honoring um, our woundedness. Mm -hmm. We were honoring the spiral of emotions instead of actually standing powerfully in our emotions yes. and asking, what is the highest use of my next action? What is my highest choice uh -huh. for me to make next? What is my highest commitment right now? So that's something that we really get to sit in because a lot of people will use kind of this... Um, I'm being with my stuff right now as as a scapegoat. Yep. And I've done it so many times. So that's hide how out. I what? To hide out. Yes, exactly. So so they don't have to actually see what they're made of. Yeah. There's a lot of us and that's why I say us, right? Cuz we all have we all have a little bit of the victim story still running. Yeah. Um that use it to the point where literally they never get anything really done. And, and this, this um, honoring of one's limitations, this right. honoring <laughs> Fighting of, for yes. your excuses and, yeah, your limitations. I, I have a friend, um, I had a friend in the past who, uh, he was always processing. Always yeah. processing, always oh had God. something to process and, you know, when you said that thing, you know, 12 days ago, it really made me feel and all of these things. And like, yes, you get to honor your feelings, but all that you feel is not real. Yeah. And this is the thing we get to understand. Um, the feelings, they'll come and go. Yeah. But they won't go <laughs> if we keep dragging them into the now and dragging them into the now because I have to, to process this right now. And this this victim story, right? Yeah. And And also, you know, People, we all have emotions, and emotions absolutely get to be honored, but not if they're, well, I'm feeling this way because you're wrong and I'm right. Yes. That's your victim story. And this is what a lot of people don't get. They're like, well, I'm honoring my emotions right now, so I need to be pissed off and angry and frustrated or sad and hurt and da-da-da because I'm a victim and you haven't apologized to me yet, <laughs> and now I need to process this. Uh-huh. You're still in your victim story. And as long as you're in your victim story, you are disempowering yourself mm -hmm. and you're fighting for your limitations and you're fighting for your smallness. Yep. So continue to do that. Continue to hide out. Continue to fight for your smallness. Continue to stay where you're at or actually step in powerfully and go, how am I responsible for this? What do I need to change within myself to get the result I'm actually after? And this is where processing turns into action. Yes. Because people will process all freaking day long. Because isn't processing your emotions so the much best easier. scapegoat? It's so much easier. But it's the best scapegoat yeah. because it's like, oh, well, guys, I'm actually processing my emotions right now. So I'm actually doing work on myself, but it's actually still victim work. So mm -hmm. I'm actually honoring and acknowledging and hyping up my victim story. Yep. That's why I can't go to the party tonight. Sorry. Yep. And that's why I can't engage in this conversation right now because I'm doing the work and you're not. The, the funny thing <laughs> about that as well is, is uh, when we're in that space, we tend to try to find other friends to validate this story. Big time. Right? So we, we, we find our, other people that are really good at doing the same thing. Yes, our complaining <laughs> crew. We all get together and we talk about how our life yes. is really the worst. And then you're like, girl, you think yours is terrible. What about this? Let me compete for worst life exactly, ever. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is... Um, a very disempowering uh, way of being, and what's under it, what's under it is fear, right? So the fear is, um, if I have something to constantly process, if I am a victim to my circumstances, then of course, of course, I haven't done anything with my career yet. 
Of I'm course not. I'm still processing. Of course I haven't done anything with my health yet yes. because I'm still processing. Yes. Of course I haven't actually taken action on the thing that I'm supposed to take action on, but it's because I'm still processing. Yeah. And, and you should understand that, right? And this is really, it's so insidious because again, it's such an easy scapegoat. Yep. It makes us feel like we're actually being proactive when really we're taking 20 steps back. And you know, Preston was saying, if you're always finding yourself processing, it's not the emotion, it's not the circumstance, it's you at the center of all of it. Addicted to it, just Addicted getting one more hit. Addicted to like, your victimhood. Ooh. Addicted to I'm your hurt. emotions. You've labeled yourself, well, I'm just an emotional person. No, you're a human being that experiences emotions. And we all do, by the way. We all do. And what do you choose? Yes. And you still get to face off powerfully. Uh-huh with those emotions and take responsibility for them instead of using them as an excuse to why your life's not working. Yep. Yeah. Boom. All right. What else are we going to talk about? Uh, let's just talk about sex. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Wait, we were going to talk about something else the other day. Um, and then it got late and there yeah. was no natural light anymore. This is true. Think about it. While well, I read some of these, laugh my ass off. So true. Emotional processing can totally be playing small and victimizing yourself. Um, okay. Well. Ah, uh, Nadia, I love you too, mama. Tune, tune, tune. Actually, let's go to a couple of these last two questions. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Great. so last two questions. Well, this one we kind of answered. Lauren's question we answered. Okay. Uh, Matt's question. Okay, Samar said, how to have financial stability and not sacrifice our body's health, mental health, or spiritual health, dreams, for beginners. Ha, ha, ha. I'm new to being an adult. <laughs> Adulting. <laughs> yes. Adulting all day. I love it. Um, so how to have financial stability. So money is energy. Money is energy, just like our spiritual energy, just like our purpose energy, just like our mission, just like our health. All of it is just energy. And so many of us make money God or we make money evil, yes. the devil. So it's like God or the devil. And we put it on these incredibly mm -hmm. far and distant pedestals. <laughs> yeah. Like one is God and one is the devil. And we're in between going, well, either one seems so out of my reach. I don't want to be with greed and I don't want to be an evil person because I have money, depending on your money story, yes. right? And I also don't want to make money God because that would mean I'm a terrible person and I don't want to have too much money where I separate all of myself from all my friends and nobody's going to... Yes. We have so many stories around yes. it and money is just energy. And, you know, money was created as an exchange of value. It's an exchange of value. It was actually a, a representation of an exchange of actual value because uh -huh. money's just paper um, until money actually became something that we said is valuable. So we get to look at the energy of money and say, how am I creating value in this world? What's the impact I want to make? Now, if you're saying, how do I do that with my mental health, my spiritual health, and my body's health? Without sacrificing it. Right. Well, guess what? I can't give my highest potential of value if my health, physical health, is shit. I can't give my highest potential of value if my mental health is always questioning why am I not good enough and da 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 I can't give my highest potential of value yes. if my spiritual health is like this. Uh -huh. I must exercise all my energies yes. in order to give my highest potential of service and value to the world, which in turn creates an exchange of monetary value. That's the world we live in and a lot of people who are low on money are actually low on service. Mm. They're low on impact. They're uh. low on providing value. Uh. I was going to drop the mic, but sometimes you just have to have your husband do it. Uh. No. <laughs> um, it's true, though. A lot of people are like, I don't understand why I'm not making money. I'm like, what have you done in the last 24 hours to serve? Yes. To create value for others. Beautiful story about this, and I'm going to release a video about it probably next week. Um, Chris Rock has this was in, being interviewed, and he was talking about how... Um, uh, back in the day when he when his car used to break down he would get out of his car and try to flag people down and nobody would stop but the moment he got behind his car and started pushing it mm. other drivers yes. would pull over yes. and help him push it along the road he was already in action now this is everything because the moment you, you, you get into action, the moment you get intentional and put your money where your mouth is, where you put your, your body where all that talk is, 
Everybody else wants to help. Have you ever noticed that? That success is so attractive. Have you ever so noticed true. how when somebody's on fire, when somebody is tapped in to the truth of their being, you just want to be around them? You want to snuggle up against them? You're like, yeah. how can I support? What can I do? Yes. How do I get involved in this amazingness? Because it is. Yes. It's infectious. What up, Jeff? And honestly, honestly, that's what most people miss. They're trying to be infectious by comparing to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I have to do this thing. Oh, wait, so-and-so is doing that, so now I have to copy that. Yep. Versus staying in your own fucking lane uh. and making your lane so desirable uh. that people are like, damn. Hey, I've, I've never seen that lane before. I, this is, what kind of... <laughs> this is a new, a new lane. <laughs> and honestly, that's a lot of people miss that. A lot of people are stuck in competition mentality yes, where they they're are. constantly looking at their competitors and going, well, I need to do what they're doing and I need to do what they're doing. And meanwhile, all your energy is going towards trying to copy somebody else. Yes. You can't copy somebody else's magic, mm -mm. but you can own yours. Yes. And when you own yours, you dominate your lane uh. because there's nobody else like you and that's your sure. gift. And we hear that. It's a cool meme that we've seen on Instagram and we heart sometimes, uh -huh. but like, think about that. When you actually own who you are, own your magic, you dominate. Yes. Because there's no other person, there's no other human being in this planet, on this world, that is you. Yes. But you're too busy looking at what so-and-so is doing and so on, wasting all that energy comparing. Yes. Versus just head to the ground, let's go. Yes. Let's go. One more thing I'll add uh, to the money conversation or story. Um, it's, it's this idea and, and this is what has worked for me and Alexi, is, is move as fast and as intentional and as deliberate as possible without rushing, without trying to hurry up. Because this is the thing, every time I'm in a rush, every time I'm in scarcity mindset, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, all the creativity flows right out the window. Mm -hmm. But the moment I am deliberate, and playful and moving as fast as possible without rushing or hurrying, creativity is abound, it flows everywhere. As soon as I open up the channel, oh my goodness, it just flows, it hits me. Divine inspiration is everywhere. But it's a consciousness, it's a consciousness. And so the, 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 the thing that you get to be aware of is where am I at in me? Yes. Am I, am I um, in scarcity and competition, because competition doesn't exist, or am I in creativity and joy and intention, intentional uh, about what I'm up to right now, mm. with a fierceness on your heart? You see, a lot of times, especially in the spiritual community, we think that you have to be flowers all the time. Blessings, brother, yes. Blessings, yes, and we do this all the time. And for me, I like to get in that lion mode. I, I want to annihilate. Right? Not people or animals, but just what it means to be beast mode, Preston. Like, yeah. like, why not? Why not move into your edges? Like, people are like, oh, well, domination is such a masculine energy. And it, <laughs> domination is what we came here to be us. Let's get it. The problem is, is most people forgot how to be themselves and left themselves at four years old <laughs> and started pretending to be everything they thought they had to yes. be to get love. Yes. So domination is our natural way of being. We dominate just by being who we are. Mm. So why not be the best freaking version of you Let's and see it. what you're actually made of? Uh -huh. Why not? Why play small? Why play average? Why? Just wondering. That's it. All right. I think we should get out of here. <laughs> okay. We're going to get out of here. We love you guys. Yes. We do. Although we've come to the end of the road, no one can let go. It's unnatural. You belong to me. I belong to you. Start with 90s hits, you gotta end with them. Please, if this inspired you in any way, please share it and write something above the share that has people click on it. Uh, we think that it was pretty this valuable. But who the freak knows? We love you guys so much. Yeah. Blessings and blessings. Yes, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bridge experience. If you Toronto. are in Perth, Toronto, Gold Coast, get at us before the end of the year. Those are our final ones for the year, guys, so do it. And then we'll be in LA and a few other places. 
in June. Yes. Uh, Rastafari, blessings and blessings. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being our tribe. Thank you for being our family. Thank you for holding us up. Um, we feel you. And if you see us on the street... That's real, though. That's real talk. Yes. That's, that's like not just stuff we're saying. Yes. You guys are awesome. Yes. Like, just go back and look at these comments and just look how awesome you guys all are. Yep, real like talk. Like, the questions you ask, your authenticity, how you bring it, the way you're willing to look at yourself, mm. the way you're willing to actually get out in the world and take action and make mm. some shit happen in the world. You're pretty awesome. So give yourself some love today. Give yourself some credit for being amazing because um, you guys truly are. What up, Michelle? Love you. Watch this from the beginning, Michelle.